Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Rossi. I'm a business coach and brand strategist, and we are in the second video of a personal branding series, talking about what it is, why it's important, how to develop it, um, the visual identity aspects of it. And so today we're actually talking about eight foundational steps in the process of developing your personal brand. If you missed the first video, go back and watch it and you'll see why it is so important to be intentional about your personal brand and then come back and we are going to jump right in. Just to recap very briefly, if you're not gonna go back and watch that first video, like you should, um, really a personal brand is not an exercise in vanity. It is not about self-promotion. It is not about taking a bunch of selfies or having a perfectly curated feed on Instagram. It is about an exercise in confidence. It is about it being intentional, about the reputation and perception that you are building in the world. And it's also about defining those things, defining your values, defining your strengths and weaknesses so that you can find resonance and connect with other people because ultimately your personal brand is not about you. It's about being able to connect with others in the right places. So go back and watch that video. And today we're talking about a little bit more in depth, the eight steps that you need to do in order to build a personal brand that is really well defined and that actually serves you. So we're going to jump right into it. I'm going to pull up my notes here. And so the first thing is really um, knowing your strengths. And I will preach this until the cows come home. It is so essential that you get clarity and like, I'm talking like crystal clear clarity on what you're good at, why you're good at it, understanding how you're wired. Um, everyone has a natural bent, has natural giftings and strengths and abilities that others do not. And so when you can be clear about what you're good at, what you're for, um, what you're able to do, what you're not able to do, it will really open certain doors, the right doors, and it will close a lot of the wrong doors that if you hadn't done this work would be very tempting to walk through. So it's going to save you a lot of time and heartache by doing the internal non glamorous work of figuring out in this case, who is Brittany and what do I excel at? Right. And so once you do that, and I really like taking an objective personality test like StrengthsFinders 2.0, it was actually the thing that kicked off my entrepreneurial career. Um, you know, it really allows you to do number two, which is be yourself. Um, when you're able to very confidently be yourself, unapologetically, unashamedly, it's incredibly attractive and it has nothing to do with what you look like your physical appearance whatsoever. It has to do with your values, with your personality, with your, your just shameless confidence and like, this is who I am. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't, right? I can't be everybody's cup of tea. And so what that also does though, is it sets you apart in your industry. It gives you a leg to stand on that nobody else can because nobody else can be you. And so once you get clear about knowing your strengths and defining like, who you are or learning to be comfortable with who you are. Like maybe you're, you've never said something that you really like, like maybe you really like, I don't know, gnomes. And like, you would be really embarrassed to say like, I just love gnomes. Like they're so cute. I love them. And like, you would feel like that was weird. Like get comfortable with saying like, yeah, I love gnomes. It's a weird thing, whatever. I like them. Right. And, and whatever those things are, Take the time to do the work to get really comfortable in yourself about what you like and what you don't like. Um, and, and that can be very, very much um, a challenging process. And believe you me, I had to do some deep, deep work about what I felt comfortable putting out into the world, into the online space, because it, it can be a very cutthroat world. Not every community is as loving and accepting as we would like to think that they are. Um, so I recognize that these first two steps can actually take time. It can take years even for a person to get comfortable in who they are. But if this is something that you can really be thoughtful and intentional about, um, that process can be very much shortened and it is so worth doing that work, taking the time to do that. Um, once you get clarity on those two pieces, the third thing that you're going to want to do to build your personal brand is get clear on what story are you telling? Um, and becoming a good storyteller 
is essential if you are building a personal brand. People want to follow those who are inspiring or who are aspiring to a certain thing. So maybe you're putting out there that you are going on a weight loss journey. Maybe you are on the road to um, 100 cities, right? Or maybe you are on the road to six figures, right? Maybe you're, you're trying to scale to six figures and you're being very transparent about your numbers. People like to follow a story and they want to know how it ends. In fact, we are wired that if a, a story loop is not closed, like it's hard for us to sleep. We do not like to walk away in a movie in a cliffhanger. I mean, that's how they hook us on these TV shows that have these awesome cliffhangers. They're like, I guess I'll be tuning in next week or I guess I'll be Netflix binging all weekend, right? So when we get clear on the story we're telling, whether it's something that's already happened or it's something that we're kind of telling live and watching it unfold, be clear about it and be clear about the end that you're driving towards. Um, because people wanna know the end of the story. They wanna know um, if, if you have had success or they wanna see you have success in real time. Um, and, and really what people are looking for is hope. So if you can paint a picture of hope and whatever story you're telling, and if it's a joyful thing, or if it is even a sad thing, um, finding a way to frame it so you're closing that loop and it's clear and it's consistent, it's not rambling. Nobody likes somebody who just like rambles on and on. You're like, is there a point to this? Can we get to the end, please? Everybody wants to know with concise clarity, I mean, you've got 20 seconds um, you know, to, to communicate with somebody, sometimes even less than that. You've got two seconds to capture somebody's attention on social media, right? So. Be clear about the story that you're telling. Is Are you casting a vision of hope for someone's finances? Are you casting a vision of hope for someone's health and wellness? Um, what is the thing that you're casting vision for and what's the story that you're trying to tell? Um, the next thing that you wanna do is when you're developing your, your personal brand is learning how to be consistent. And I can tell you with honest to goodness truth that this has been something so challenging for me. Um, in my life, I'm an incredibly curious person. I'm like, oh, what is this thing over here? I want to go learn about it. I want to explore it. Um, and I hate being put into a box. So when I started out with my business, being consistent with something was very challenging for me because I just wanted to explore all the things. And I also had shiny object syndrome going on real bad. So full transparency here, consistency has been a challenge for me in the beginning of my business. I'm much better at it now, but I also have things like systems and automations and you know schedulers that help me to batch in advance and to also be consistent on the front end. And now I haven't always used those things and I've gone through seasons where you know, it, I felt a need to pivot and those things are okay. The thing that builds um, distrust in people is when you constantly have this overhaul and it's like, if this person really doesn't know what they're doing, but taking breaks or making slight pivots and say you go from logo design to um, uh, personal branding design, then you know that's not a huge leap. It's a, it's a sub shift, right? It's a pivot. It's not like an overall or 180 degree turn. Um, so that consistency really builds trust and trust is what helps people to say yes to handing over their credit card or their dollars, their hard earned dollars to work with you for the service or product that you're providing them. Um, and so when you can start to be consistent, you can also start to say, you know what guys, like I don't have it all together. And you can even say that from the beginning. I can say that now, like I don't have it all together. There's so much about entrepreneurship that I'm learning. Trends are constantly changing. Algorithms, Lord have mercy, are constantly changing. And so um, it's really important in the branding, personal branding um, craft <laughs> it, to face your failures and to own them and to kind of put them out into the world and say, you know what, I sent that email before I intended to and it wasn't complete and there were still typos in it. Oops, I'm a human, right? Um, now, there's a difference between an occasional mistake versus like competency issues. And so having the wisdom and clarity to kind of say, you know what, maybe I'm just not very good at this. I, I really shouldn't be putting that out there. And also using wisdom of saying like, you know what, maybe I'm not through the end of this mistake or the consequences of it. I need to see it through to completion before I put it out into the world, right? So using wisdom about when to share your mistakes and how to frame them is very wise, but be available to own your failures, own your mistakes, and put yourself out there as a human because people want to connect with people. Humans want to connect with humans. We don't want to connect with robots, right? So doing that actually humanizes 
your personal brand because it really is, it's personal. People need to feel like they can get to know you personally on some level, right? And so the uh, one of the other things that was really important to do is um, figure out what is the legacy like. I like to do this kind of retirement exercise in my mind. What are the things that I, when I look back and I've retired from my career, um, that I wanna be really proud of that I took the time to build or I took the time to be a part of. And when we can take the time to identify our values, our values inform our daily actions and our daily actions build up to build a lifestyle and a legacy that we can look back on and say, yeah, I'm really proud of that or, you know, I wish I had done things a little bit differently. And so by being intentional now and starting today, I think we can choose to live with no regrets. And that is a very freeing thing. It's a very encouraging thing. And um, when we live in a way that we're intentional about the legacy that we're leaving, it really allows us and helps us to show up as the best version of ourself. And this again, prevents us from crafting some persona that is not really us, but is more of something that we're trying to be, but ends up making us feel like we're an imposter or we're a fraud. So taking the time to do an inventory of what does it look like when I show up on a day and it's like my best self, right? Like I am thriving today. I am rocking it. I look good in these jeans. I am winning. Yeah. So taking the time to do that is really important. I also like to remind people that when you're building a personal brand, there's a lot of wisdom in taking time to find a mentor because it's a very fine line between um, emulating qualities that you admire and want to adopt for your own self. For example, there is somebody who I admire who handles conflict incredibly well, and I love the way they phrase things, and they're very slow and thoughtful when they respond to sticky situations, and I wanna adopt some of those methods of communication, right? There's that, and then there is trying to be them, right? Being a copycat, and that is something that always feels icky, which is why it's super important, one, to own who you are and do the work at the foundational level of who is, who is Brittany, um, what are my strengths? And it's one thing to learn new, new skills and kind of adopt methods. And it's another thing to be a copycat. And so when you can find a mentor um, that you admire and can kind of emulate and, and find things that you value, but also have somebody that you can actually dialogue with. So it's one thing to admire someone from afar versus having a coach or a mentor help you work through the things so that it's something that you own and becomes a part of you is incredibly valuable. We all have blind spots and having somebody who can come alongside us and say, Hey, have you considered blank? Um, you know, it's very helpful and it's a safe space for us to explore who we are and who we want to be. And then once you establish these things and you start to take action, you put them out into the world. The final step in building the personal brand is getting your reputation to precede you. And the way that that starts to happen is in testimonials, it's in the social proof, um, it comes in the form of referrals, word of mouth referrals are such a compliment. And so when you can get to that place where you have clarified and defined your brand so well that you no longer need to define it for people, but others do, that is when you know that you have developed a very clear and compelling brand for others to be able to engage with you with. And so, like I've mentioned before in the other video, your personal brand is not about you. It is about defining something that allows you to put out the right signals, attracting the right people to you so that you can start to engage with them and serve them. So those are my eight steps for how to develop a personal brand. And if you found this video helpful, um, I would so appreciate a like, a subscribe or a share. And if you guys have any questions about how to develop a personal brand, drop them in the comment section below. In the next video, we will talk about the actual how to develop the visual brand identity. And these are the things like your logo and your colors and the patterns and all the fun things that people talk about when it comes to building the brand. So that's it for today. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next video in the series. Bye guys.